Okay, so in this video, we want to find the following limit using L'Hopital's rule. As always, when we have a limit, let's look at what kind of case we're dealing with. Well, as x tends to infinity, the argument of the cube root clearly tends to infinity. The cube root of something which tends to infinity will also tend to infinity. Minus, well, as x tends to infinity, x tends to infinity. So we have an infinity minus infinity case. Well, it's clear now that we cannot apply L'Hopital's rule yet, so the idea will be to factor an x from this expression, and then send x as a 1 over x to the denominator, and then we will be, applied to, we will be able to apply L'Hopital's rule. So, let's do so. The question, of course, is, well, how do we pull out an x from the cube root? Well, if you think about this, the cube root of what is an x? Well, the cube root of x cubed. So we want to factor in the argument of our cube root an x cubed. If we factor x cubed, then we're left with 1 plus 6 over x plus 1 over x cubed. You can, of course, verify by multiplying it through. So x cubed, check. x cubed over x is x squared. x cubed over x cubed is 1, check. But now we can use properties of powers, right? The cube root, and this goes for any root or any power of AB, is simply the cube root of A times the cube root of B. So I will separate here this expression as the cube root of x cubed, which is x, times the cube root of this expression. As I've just said, the cube root of x cubed will give us an x times the cube root of 1 plus 6 over x plus 1 over x cubed minus x. And now I can finally factor x from the expression. And let's see what kind of case we're dealing with now, after factoring out an x from the expression. Well, as x tends to infinity, x tends to infinity. And if we look at the second piece, as x tends to infinity, 6 over x and 1 over x cubed will both shrink to 0. And we'll be left here with the cube root of 1, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we have an infinity times 0 case. And so you can see what happens. By factoring an x from the expression, the case has changed from infinity minus infinity, so something very large, minus something very large, to a case of the form infinity times 0, something very large, times something very small. Well, we cannot yet apply L'Hopital's rule, but this is easily fixed. Instead of multiplying by x, we can divide by 1 over x, right? As x is the same as times... 1 over 1 over x. And if we send the x down in this fashion, we will have a case where we can now use L'Hopital's rule. And because we're about to use L'Hopital's rule, I will change, thinking of differentiating, the cube root as a power of 1 third. So this expression I keep the same, and as I've just said, instead of multiplying something by x, we can divide it by 1 over x. As 1 over 1 over x is the same as times x. And now we will be able to use L'Hopital's rule. As x tends to infinity, we've already said that this converges to 0. And as x goes to infinity, 1 over x also goes to 0. So by two key manipulations, by factoring an x from the expression, 
and then sending the x as a 1 over x to the denominator, now we have a 0 over 0 case, and we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Well, before we differentiate any further, or begin a differentiation, when we differentiate the over x and the over x cubed term, we will not use the quotient rule, but the power rule, right? We will think of 1 over x being x to the minus 1, so that when we differentiate, this will become negative x to the negative 2, which is simply negative 1 over x squared. So the derivative of 1 over x, negative 1 over x squared, and we'll do the same thing with the 1 over x cubed. 1 over x cubed is, of course, x to the negative 3. Once we differentiate from the power rule, we get negative 3, x to the negative 4, which, of course, is the same as negative 3 over x4. And now we're good to go. So we differentiate the numerator first. Well, by the chain rule, the outer function is 1 over 3, so we differentiate the power of 1 third by the power rule, so we bring the exponent down. one third minus one is negative two thirds times the derivative of the argument by the chain rule because all this is is coming from differentiating the exponent alone there's still all this that we must differentiate so times the derivative of one is zero the derivative of six over x will be negative six over x squared plus the derivative of one over x cubed which is negative 3 over x4. Minus the derivative of 1, which is 0. So now we have the derivative of the numerator. And we're dividing this by the derivative of the denominator. Derivative of 1 over x, as we've just said, is negative 1 over x squared. And now we're almost done We'll simplify because we'll bring this up to the numerator. If we divide by negative 1 over x squared, that's the same as multiplying by negative x squared, right? If you divide by a fraction, you can multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal of negative 1 over x squared is negative x squared over 1. And the last step will be simply to multiply this out by the negative x squared. And as we're about to see, after we perform this step, the limit will become trivial. So if we multiply through, well, the negatives will cancel, so everything will become positive. And 6, x, 6 over x squared times x squared, these will cancel. And we'll have positive 6. Plus 3. Now, x squared over x4 will give us a over x squared. And now we're ready to let x tend to infinity. So as x tends to infinity, 6 over x tends to 0. 1 over x cubed tends to 0. So we see that this term, at least the argument, if we ignore the power for now, will be approaching 1, but 1 to any power is simply 1. So this term is approaching 1. Here, well, 3 over x squared will be approaching 0. So this term will be approaching 6 plus 0, which is 6. So this is approaching 6. And so in the end, of course, one third is a constant, so it just stays one third. We are left with a third times one times six. 
which is of course quite simply 6 over 3, which is 2. So this was a rather interesting example. We went from an infinity minus infinity case, we factored an x and obtained an infinity times 0 case, then instead of multiplying by x, we divided by 1 over x, which created a 0 over 0 case, we were then able to apply L'Hopital's rule, and by simplifying the expression, the limit became trivial, and finally gave us an answer of 2. So if we go back, we can see that this limit, that originally was an infinity minus infinity case, is simply equal to 2. And that's it.